Technology Jargon for Business, presented by Declan O'Callaghan from Voitech. Not forgetting, the internet is governed by two key laws. The first law being Moore's Law. In 1965, he predicted that transistors per silicon chip would double every year, and the price of a silicon chip would halve every year. That enables us now to deliver the technology at the size and the speed of what we have now. The second law is Metcalfe's law. Metcalfe's law is all about the network. The more nodes that connect to a network, the more important the network is. Now, considering the amount of interconnected devices we have today, and then the explosion of interconnected devices we'll have in the future is very significant to this the evolution of the internet is very significant for us when we're looking at the evolution of technology for work and play. Back in the 60s and in the 70s, we only had 100,000 mainframes. Then we moved into client server. That meaning that, that's meaning that we put all the technology actually at the PC. The cloud then evolved. The cloud allows us now to store and maintain all of our internet related material, all of our data away from the PC, allowing us to evolve and enable smaller, cheaper, faster PCs on desk. The next element is social. The, the social impact in our world is significant. We've seen this in the Middle East. It started and stopped wars. It's also there enabling people to connect via business as well as through the personal world. The next evolution being mobile. Mobile is massive. We've moved from the first G right the way through to in 2020 delivering 5G. All of this enables faster mobility communication, getting information where we want it to be at the time we want it. The next evolution is when we're moving into the Internet of Things or IoT. That's taken us for, from 6 billion connected devices around the world to up to 75 billion smart things or smart connected devices around the world. And the last element that we're projecting right now, and it certainly won't be the last element, is for artificial intelligence. Remembering the key points of all the elements that can be connected through IoT and then evolving those into artificial intelligence and machines making decisions for us on a daily basis. When we're looking at one of the significant enablers of the internet actually is mobility. There's no point in being tied to a desk or tied to a house to receive the information we want it right now. We're already seeing that 65% of people are using emails as a key enabler of connection and they're using them over 4G devices. 4G is giving us a high-speed internet of about 20 to 20 megabits per second. If we look at the evolution of the mobility, only in the 80s, in 1980, uh, we saw that the first mobile phones, and I think actually Bob Warner, who was at the lunch today, actually talked about him having his first one in 1984. We're now evolving that through to 5G. 5G will allow us to have a 60 time faster internet connection than what our landline internet connection is, which is the MBN. That will allow us to download one movie in one second. That's the equivalent speed of what we're going to be doing. But think about that from a commercial side though. Data on mobility is expensive. So we can't just automatically think that we can replace mobile with fixed line. Waiting and seeing what the commercial offerings are from the mobile providers is going to be significant for our future. The last element here is the threshold of roaming. Acting like a local when you're overseas is really important. And there's key networks, and the one that we work with a lot is Vodafone, allowing you to work and play like a local when you go overseas. So the mobile world is very, very significant. In 2020, we're going to see 5G. Be careful though, because we've got to see all the devices that turn up for it. So in the evolution of the 5G network, that's where we're gonna get our power from. Next slide that we talked about is the business landlines. 
or the plain old telephone system. And I challenge everybody in the room, do you have um, or do you use VoIP as a technology today across your standard landlines? And the answer to that is yes. So as soon as, soon as it's leaving the copper infrastructure from the exchange, it automatically is converted into VoIP or, or consumer VoIP or business VoIP. And also a lot of people are now challenging to say, do I actually need to have a landline because I've got a mobile phone? Our challenge back to that is actually to apply the right product to the right person for the right task. And your 08 number is more important than an 04 number in business. When we're looking in a business context, we always think about who the users are. So we talked about the Homer, we talked about um, Betty sitting at the desk with a picture of the cat. And I know uh, Dan and Patty laughed a bit at that one because they, they do know who that person is. Getting, giving them the right application for them to make and receive your important landline call to your business is pertinent to the success of your business. But the next person is, is the zoner. That person is moving from meeting room to meeting room they may not just have a physical device on their desk, they may need to just log into that device. They're the people that we need to protect and look after for devices within the building. But the last person in here, which is the Roma, this person are doing the transactions outside of your bricks and mortar. They're doing the transactions to either make or grow or deliver the business for your customers. Giving them the right device with the right connectivity is pertinent again to the success of your business. The next point we discussed is the MBN. Now our belief is the MBN is a good thing and we need to get on board with it and start aligning our business evolution into the direction and the journey of the MBN. Now I produced this slide that actually talks about, in our view, where the MBN sits. Now we did a straw poll within the room. There was only a couple of hands that went up for people that are spending $1,000 plus for a point-to-point -point fiber connection. In our view, the MBN is not right for those. But then there's bonded copper, there's point-to-point -point wireless. There's about 21,000 businesses in South Australia that are running that technology, and they're spending around about $300 plus. Now, in the middle of that tier, I think the MBN is a great uh, option for them. The last part of the tier, or I'll call it the great unwashed, 36,000 businesses, approximately, are spending between $50 and $100 on an ADSL connection that is giving them on average three to one connectivity to the internet. Now, when we're talking about putting all of our businesses online in the cloud and having high accessibility to the internet, that doesn't work. That's where the MBN comes in. So you can see where the commercial model is sitting is just purely replacing the ADSL connection. The challenge though is that we're all bought into the destination, not the journey of the MBN. The MBN, for whatever it is politically or as a technology, is a journey. We're starting off with an MBN which isn't the fastest network in the world, however it's a lot faster than what the ADSL connectivity delivers. We're being sold to like it's the fastest connection you'll ever see. It's not, but it is faster than what your ADSL connection is. On paper, we are the 50th fastest network in the world. The MBN does deliver approximately a 12-12 connection. Now, if we go back to the logic of MBN against ADSL, that's four times quicker download than what your ADSL is. But it's actually 12 times faster upload than what your ADSL is. You can do a lot with that size of network. Now, thank you so much for taking the time to review this slide deck again, and also listening to us on Friday. One last law, that's my law. Everything we do in technology today has to do the litmus test of three things. Firstly, it must save you money. In today's day and age, technology really is an enabler that will sit there in the background and attack your operational cost of business and reduce it. If it doesn't, don't do it. Secondly, 
is providing you with more functionality than what you have today. Whether that's as simply as putting your information into the cloud so you can access that from anywhere in the world or making you more efficient in your workplace. Lastly, is actually working with a supplier that who provides you with demonstrable excellent service. There's no reason why you don't work with a local supplier. The battlefield has now changed for technology providers, whether you're in te telecommunications or in you're in IT, you can work with someone local who you can trust. Again, thanks for listening. If we can be of any help whatsoever, we look after um, internet connections, we look after fixed line communications for business, and we're also the master distribution for Vodafone in South Australia for business. Thanks again, catch up soon.